In mind, I'm really good at sales, not so much at drawing. So if I draw something and it doesn't look like what it is that I'm saying, I apologize in advance. So what I'm drawing here are doors and I'm gonna draw three doors. So the first door is a door that is open. The second door is a door that is closed, but it's unlocked. And then the third door is a door that is closed, but it's locked. So this one is unlocked, this one is locked, this one is just open. Min, why are you drawing doors and how does this relate anything to sales or communication? Okay, well, let me explain. When you speak to a prospect, you don't wanna to speak to them and give them a way out in the sense of, hey, if you're, if you're not interested in working with us, that's perfectly fine, just leave. What I just said there was opening the door for them to leave. Oh, you guys are too much money. Okay, we're too much money, perfectly fine. You can't afford us, then leave. You just open the door for them to go. Hey, we're not really interested. Okay, great, not a problem. Go ahead, we can't work with you guys. So that's an open door approach when you communicate, which is you're literally just telling them to leave. Now the lock, the door's locked. When somebody says, Hey, I can't afford you guys. You automatically get into the, let me handle this objection. You go, well, Mr. Prospect, you know, when you say you can't afford, like, what exactly do you mean? Hey, Mr. Prospect. Okay. So you mean like, you feel like it's out of your budget? Okay, cool. Well, well what is it? What is your budget, Mr. Prospect? Oh, you want to think about it now? Okay. Yeah, that, that's fine. If you want to think about it, can I ask you what you want to think about? Each and every single time that I'm asking a question, the prospect gave me a rebuttal, an objection. And every time I'm answering, what I'm actually doing is I'm locking the door and I'm not giving them a way out. So when I say, hey, Mr. Bud uh, Mr. Prospect, like, what is your budget? They automatically get into this person trying to find my budget, trying to sell me. The door is up. The sales door is up, right? Where now each and every single one of the questions you ask, they either answer but lie or they don't answer at all. And you actually move further away from actually closing the deal than you do closer, even if they do answer it. Again, if the door's locked, they can't open it and you're not letting them open it, what they're now feeling is pressured. Where you wanna be is the door closed, but the door is unlocked. And how do, how do you go about that? So somebody goes, hey, you know, man, like you're, you're too expensive for me. How do I unlock the door, but still keep the door closed? I go, hey, Mr. Prospect, thank you for letting me know that. I understand that you feel like our prices are quite high. If it's okay with you, can we actually review over exactly what we felt like was necessary for your property to look a certain way that you wanted? And after that, if you still think it's a lot of money and you don't think it makes sense, that's perfectly fine. We can then move forward. But is it okay if maybe we can work something else out and review this proposal together? I asked them, which is, hey, can we do this? Which again, gives them the opportunity to say yes or no. Most of the time they'll say yes. And then I go into then asking them a certain question that allows me to progress handling the objection. But what most people don't do is they don't ask them if they can do something. And so because of that, the prospect never gave you approval to continue. They gave you a rebuttal and objection, which immediately stops the conversation because what that did was it automatically put them in the no category. But the worst place to be in is you then trying to fight back, keeping the door closed and locking the door and saying, you're not leaving until you answer these questions. But in reality, what you should do is you should unlock the door, but keep it closed and say, hey, Mr. Prospect, you know, I do wanna spend the next five, 10 minutes understanding a little bit more about what you mean when you say you can't afford this, if that's okay with you. If not, that's perfectly fine. We can kind of go our separate ways. But the least we can help you with is we can look at exactly what we feel like as professionals necessary for us to get the job done and done right. But if you don't feel like whatever we're about to go over is necessary for you and you don't think it's a good fit, that's no problem. We'll shake hands and we'll part ways. So is it okay if we go into this for the next five to 10 minutes? It's something that if you know how to do and you get better at, it becomes so easy. But again, you have to get better at it. You have to train, you have to practice. 
because each and every single one of you on here, if you don't practice and you just watch my videos, you're going to sound like this person here. The person who put some money in a room, lock the door and sit down and say, you have to answer these questions. You technically don't say you have to answer it, but you never allow them to open up the door and leave. Or you're doing the first step, which is, well, men told me that I got to be okay and I got to have an abundant mindset and that, you know, I got to be okay. They're not interested. And to, because of that, I just opened the door for them to leave. <laughs> when in reality, what I really mean is you have to ask for permission. You have to allow them to understand that you're here to help. And also you have to let them know that at any given time, you know, they can leave. They don't have to answer any of your questions. And at any given time, you know, if they don't feel like it's a good fit, you know, they can let you know and you guys can part ways. It's human psychology. There's certain things that you need to do or say or ask in a way to get another human being to feel a certain way. And for you to be really, really good at what you do in this case, like bringing more business and being able to generate more income for your business, you need to understand human psychology. So I'll use the real estate, for example, let's just say I'm meeting with somebody who uh, wants me to potentially sell their home. If I go in there and I go, Hey, so before I go over to see if I can sell your home, I just have a quick, a uh, couple quick questions. Does that, is that okay? Okay, great. Question one, two, three, four, five. Okay, great. I can definitely sell your home for you. Uh, would you like to move forward? Oh, uh, no, man. Let me think about it. We're also meeting with a, another couple realtors. Okay. Well, now you're stuck. You sat, you, you've set yourself up to get that objection. How you should go about it is this. Hey, Sam. Hey, Mark. Welcome in. Glad to have you guys here. So before we go into figuring out if I'm going to be the right realtor for this specific project that you guys are looking to sell, I want to go over a few things just to understand not only the home, but maybe some of the reasons that you guys are looking to sell the home. And at the end of this conversation, if I can get a yes or no on whether or not you guys want to go with me, I would really, really appreciate that. Can we make that happen? Or are you guys lined up to speak with other people? And you guys probably need to wait for a decision. You have to wait. Okay, not a problem. So how about we do this? Okay, we'll go through obviously the stuff I have, and then we'll schedule a different time. The sooner the better for us to obviously get a decision. But hypothetically, great world. If I blow you guys off in regards of blow your socks off, and I show you go over with you exactly what you're looking for, would there be any chance in this world? You guys cancel those meeting with the realtors and you guys go with me. Yes. Okay, great. Well, again, like I mentioned, I want to get to know a little bit more about what you guys are looking for in this project and you guys as well, you know, along with the home. So my first question to you is yada, yada, yada. So when I go to that at the end, instead of saying, cool, like, you know, are you guys ready to hire me? I go, as mentioned in the beginning, if you guys if what I went over with you checked mark on each one of the categories, you guys were ready to move forward today. So let me ask you this, what category haven't I checked off yet? Oh, you checked off all of them. Okay, great. Would you like to move forward? Sure. Let's do it. Right. Or if they're like, no, I still want to think about it. Totally understandable. So I'm going to ask you this question here. And again, you can tell me, no, you guys can think about it. I totally understand. Um, but as mentioned in the beginning in the conversation, if I checked Mark, if I checked off each and every single one of the things on your guys' list, you guys were ready to go. So this pretty much just tells me that there's something that isn't checked off yet. So is it okay if I ask you what that is? Guys, every time I'm talking, I'm leading with this approach right here. I'm always giving them a way out, but I'm never opening the door for them to leave. Thank you.